Canada Hunt is a simulation field sports title developed by PSR Outdoors and published by Maximum Family Games and Virtual Play Games for the PC and Nintendo Wii in 2009. That's a whole lot of game developers and publishers I've never heard of. I know, right? And while we say this was released on two platforms, we're pretty sure this little big game hunt of fun was released on PC first and later ported over to the Wii. Look at that cover art! Got that classic Wii shovelware aura. Aura? Yeah, not really normally into mysticism, but we got deer phasing through trees over here. Lost souls of the Canadian hunt. They say it's the last thing Camelware and Canuck see before crossing to the other side. The hour of judgment is upon you, eh? And this questionable Wii box art looks identical to the original PC release. That goes for the screenshots on the back as well. But we'll be focusing squarely on the Wii release today, because as far as we can tell, that's the more accessible version of Canada Hunt. Now, as you can probably surmise by the title, this game prominently features two things. Canada, our home and native land. And hunting. A lot of snow and PEI pushed this man to dig a 25-foot long tunnel to his car, and he's not even done. Yes, we creators are very familiar with the land of hockey, maple syrup, and chain gun apologies, but, but we're- Oh, oh, sorry about no, that. No, but uh, sorry, I'm sorry, continue. <clears throat> anyway, but we're familiar with much of the great white north, but we're not so familiar with the actual act of hunting. Oh, sure, we know of folks who've ventured off into the wilds and performed acts that animal lovers would deem quite unsavory. <laughs> But we don't know much beyond that. Real hazy on the details. When we was young and our friends was slinging arrows, slathered head to toe in pungent fawn piddle, we were playing Final Fantasy VII. Hunting far more dangerous game, the elusive Golden Chocobo. Fictionalized animal husbandry? We got the skills. Real deal animal hind collecting? Not so much. So, a game like Canada Hunt is an opportunity, a safely simulated peek at the real deal world of begging prey. Grab a double double in your finest maple leaf parka. We're marching north to satiate our primal digital bloodlust in Canada Hunt. Now, before we even start the game from the Wii operating system menu, we gotta talk about something. The Canada Hunt logo. Look at it. I mean, really look at it. No doubt you see a maple leaf in the center. Spot on. And the colors? Red and white. Canada colors through and through. But it's the arrangement of said pigments that has our northern senses tingling. See, here's what a Canadian flag looks like, right? Cool. And here's the game's logo. Look closely. Notice anything? The bars. They're going in the wrong direction. Horizontal instead of vertical. That's not Canada. <gasps> that's the flag of... It's Austria. Well, now, that's foreboding. I hope they at least know where Canada is on a map. <laughs> um, is that... Yeah. The title screen for Canada Hunt features a map of the Gulf of Mexico? Well, we're not the most geographically inclined, but even we know the Gulf of freaking Mexico is probably close to Mexico! Geography. It's fun. I'm not even sure they could have picked a worse ma- Huh. What's that? What's what? Shh, quiet. Listen. Wait, that's coming from the game? Oh, no. That's... Does, does this give you a weird feeling? Like Hannah Hunt took two guitar lessons, decided to try out for the New York Philharmonic, and we're the only ones in the audience? <laughs> Yeah, that's it, that's it. I want to be supportive, like uh, Canada Hunt's an inept friend. But I also want it to stop. Maybe if we start clapping, they'll wrap it up? Oh, good job, Canada Hunt! We're finished doing sounds now. Between the music, the map, and the logo, I think these developers are a few cheese curds short of a poutine. Don't you mean poutine? <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Ah, uh, Shane, looks like you're no longer welcome in Quebec. A lot of disappointment floating around today, and we haven't even clicked past the main menu. Let's see if the help screen can shine a light on how this thing plays. Okay, seems to be a point with your cursor guide for all the inputs. And by hovering over the two button on the Wiimote, the text guide mm. fails to load what the button actually does? A literal written guide would have been better than this. I have to get most of our learning through experience. Right. Let's try this. Sim hunt mode. The game gives us a paltry three animals to choose from. Two are hoofed remnant mammals. The other? Uh, turkey. Turkey. <laughs> right. The front of the box called this a bonus. A bonus? Really? 
All three of these animal types are limited to one location each, meaning there is a grand total of three stages? Seems to be the case. Look, we can start hunting white-tailed deer in glorious Saskatchewan, Canada. Or we can choose hunting elk in Rocky Mountains, Colorado. The game is called Canada Hunt. Colorado, not in Canada. Maybe it's just a special one-off level? They couldn't have placed turkey hunting outside the country as well. South Carolina's low country? What? I'm so angry. That is closer to the Bahamas than anywhere in Canada. Impressive. Three locations, two of the United States, in a game called Canada Hunt. Well, let's just choose freaking Saskatchewan then. We're getting something Canadian out of this game, Dagnabbit. We're pushed to a menu with a bunch of weapons and ammo to choose from. This menu has virtually no guide or information for what would be appropriate on this hunt. If you're like us and don't know about hunting, this isn't helpful. Look at all the dead space on the right over there. They could have easily filled that with gear descriptions and suggestions. Whatever, we'll figure it out on our own then. Let's get going. What's going on with that elk's peepers? The left eye seems to be higher than the right. Did they design this from memory? <laughs> Something's off with the modeling of the lower body too. Compare it to the deer on the left. Jagged polygons galore. The eyes of the animals occupying the digital landscapes of Canada hunt bear no soul. They exist without a hint of the beast that would naturally reside around them. The textures of the models denote a ragged appearance, one crafted less of skill and more of a need to finish a job with haste. Who the heck was that? Uh, okay, never mind. We are finally, finally getting into the game. Well, this looks the worst. Whoa, whoa, what's happening? Why are we seeing under the deer? I don't know, I was pressing buttons trying to figure out how to take out the rifle and this popped up. Now that we've seen the native wildlife way up close and personal, we can say we were wrong in our initial impressions. This, this looks the worst. And look, there's a hole in its hoof and random chunks missing just about everywhere. This is way below what I expected. I don't know why you had your expectations set so high. You experienced the main menu, right? You wanna know why I had expectations? Read the back of the box. Experience real wildlife elements with advanced high resolution graphics. That's right, experience real wildlife elements with advanced high resolution graphics. Oh, let's not even get into the fact that Maximum Family Games released a teen rated game that by definition is not fit for the entire family. But this right here? cutting edge graphics. Visual fidelity is half the problem here. Listen, I can't hear the deer moving around at all. No joke, no matter how close you are, even if they're marching past you, the deer are dead silent. We are not hearing anything in the way of foliage being crushed or leaves being smushed. Your character does create noise when walking but sometimes during movement, that stops as well. Really noticeable in a world where you can hear a pin drop. The silence of the digital world has a surreal beauty. Was it the absence of creativity that fueled the lack of proper modeling and sound? Or was there a deeper purpose? We may never know. We can discover little movement beyond the grass and weeds gently swaying out of the still earth, the hot moisture billowing from the hunter's every breath. Nature may reveal more secrets, pull back more branches from this unreal forest. No, really, who was that? Dunno, but they really have a way with words. Speaking on realism, that hunter's breath? Yeah, that only happens when your character is standing still. If you move, the character doesn't breathe. At least, there's no evidence of it. 
Sounds like they forgot to implement that in motion. Yeah, just like they forgot to add any kind of animal trails that we can follow. That's like a pretty important to some hunters, right? Tracking an animal. Now, maybe it would have been too advanced to show vegetation getting bent over and trampled. But how about droppings? A simple asset to tell the player some critter's been around. I'm talking poopies. One or two poopies to help. <laughs> Or, 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 okay, maybe, maybe even tracks in the mud and dirt. Hoof marks. Which we know they can do. We do? We do, because the hunter character leaves footprints everywhere he goes. You can look behind your character and see a trail left by his booties. If they implemented boot prints for the main character who we don't have to track, why wouldn't they do the same for the animals we do have to track? Speaking of looking for stuff, you've only got two perspectives in Canada Hunt. First person, which looks like this. And third person, which looks like uh, this. Okay, I apologize for what we said about those deer models in the loading screen. They look masterfully crafted compared to this guy. Walking animation so stiff, he looks like he's walking on hot coals. And if the camera moves in just the wrong way, Ugh. His eyes have pupils behind his pupils. Sometimes Mr. Hunter's walk cycle doesn't trigger properly. Stride the wrong way and the animation locks. Now our character can softly float around the forest floor. But the walk-in animation isn't the only thing busted here, people. It's time we talk about the way this game controls. Look, folks, maybe you've played a game in the past on the Wii. Maybe even a first-person shooter. How would you expect a Wii title released in the late 2000s to comparatively control? You've got your Wii remote, you've got your nunchuck, the nunchuck has a thumbstick, a thumbstick that is obviously used to move around, right? Well, you can move forwards by pushing up on the thumbstick or backwards by pushing down. Regardless of which movement you make or how much pressure you apply, the speed will always be the same. Ultra, super, slow. Super Mario 64 figured out using a range of movement speeds, and that came out like a decade before the Wii was even released. Mamma mia! So we've talked forwards and backwards. But what about shifting the thumbstick left and right? What happens? Nothing. Nothing at all. How do you steer this lumbering ox of a character left and right in the world? By holding the B trigger on the Wiimote and aiming at the sensor bar. Works about as well as it sounds. You have to aim precisely at the sensor bar for it to register. If you miss it even a little, the motion controls won't register and your character will not move. The cherry on top, no on-screen cursor. No way to visually verify where you're pointing. It's a shot in the dark. It kind of feels like aiming with a mouse on a super tiny mouse pad. And whenever you accidentally cross the borders of said mouse pad, your movement locks. It's a punishing way to play. Sitting on your couch, motionlessly aiming, rigidly shifting the Wiimote back and forth as you attempt to keep your steering in check. See an animal and want to quickly pivot to follow it? Don't, you'll likely lock up. If you want your inputs to work, you gotta take it slow and steady. Makes locating wildlife wildly difficult. And this exact control method is used while aiming weapons as well. Let's see here, you have to hold down your B button on the Wiimote to aim, just like with moving, but then you hit the C button on the nunchuck to switch to aiming mode and push the Z button to fire. That's right, the trigger button on the Wii remote does not fire your weapon. Intuitive. But because, again, there's no visual indication where on the sensor bar you're aiming, it can accidentally stop tracking mid-hunt. Totally messing up your shot. Doesn't that sound fun? So good, so realistic, all this is perfect simulation. And speaking of a perfect simulation, the game box points out that you can use the compatible Wii Zapper peripheral to play. Don't listen to this, it's a cruel trick. This doesn't just make the game worse, it makes it nigh unplayable. The existing button layout for the game does not function well when you use the Zapper, and there's no way to change to a different layout. So all the problems we talked about with aiming to move your character, you basically end up aiming what effectively looks like a weapon to move a character. It doesn't doesn't feel natural at all. They totally slap that compatibility badge on the box, cross their fingers, and kick the game out the door. While a simulation of the hardships one would face in the wilds of nature, the struggle to act with this virtual world wrapped in broken mechanics somehow emulates the real hunter struggle to observe prey. Can one say this was accidental or purposeful? 
in intention. Who keeps saying that stuff? I don't know, but they're spot on about the hunter's struggle. I'm struggling to keep playing this game. It's pretty boring. Yeah, I guess. Though that boringness is probably pretty true to form. How'd you mean? Well, in real life, if you went on a hunting trip, you really would be out in the wild. Maybe alone, not really doing much. You'd have to wait patiently and quietly all camouflaged, biding your time until aloof prey just treaded near you. Yeah, credit where credit's due. This. Must be what it's really like. But, uh, it still sucks, though, right? Oh, you know it. So I guess we'll just wait for something to walk by then? This probably could take a while. Huh. Wanna talk about burgers or something? Oh, I know! Uh, got any strange facts about Canada that people might not know? Oh yeah, sure. Really? Like what? Well, I know a billion things about Smarties. Smarties. Enlighten me. Well, see, in the US, Smarties are hard little powdery candies they hand out at Halloween. In Canada, this type of confection is called Rockets. Uh, Smarties in Canada, however, are like M&Ms, hard candy coated outside and milk chocolate inside. Wow, I, I didn't know that. So wait, what do they call Smarties in the States? Nothing. Nothing? Canadian Smarties don't exist in the States. That is a strange fact. Crazy, an original Canadian candy doesn't exist No, no, in... no, Smarties didn't originate in Canada either. They're from the UK. Oh, so Canada gets Smarties from England and that's no, how... No, 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 no. Canadian Smarties and British Smarties, despite looking similar, are distinctly different. Chocolate outsides, hard candy insides? No, they're like Canadian Smarties. But you just said... that They taste different. The orange-colored Smarties in the UK taste like an actual orange fruit. That's the only difference? Yep. Has a deer walked by, or should I just point the Wiimote at my skull? Nope, no deer. Guess we'll try covering ground again, but, uh, look at this. The game limits your walking speed to the pace of a sleep-deprived snail. They likely did this because the prey moves so slowly that if you could run, you would be able to catch up to them far too easily, taking away the fun of the hunt. If you can call any of this fun. But with that in mind, we get it. Running would break the game. It's a harsh truth, but one we accept. That is until we play challenge mode. Here you have a five minute time limit and an amount of prey to take out. And shockingly, they give you the ability to run. And we don't mean a button that lets you run. You are just running all the time. Hunter Man, Tokyo drifts around vegetation like he's coated in Teflon. We were right. The prey has no chance. You constantly catch up to them. It's not even a challenge. Funny thing in this challenge mode. <laughs> but running doesn't help much when you still need to stop and clumsily aim at stuff. Might not seem like a problem, but this is a hunting sim. The whole game hinges on good feeling weapon controls, but the overly complicated setup makes the simple act of aiming completely unintuitive and totally unpleasant. You should just be able to aim at the screen and shoot with a cursor like, can't believe I'm gonna say this, like the better way it's done in Chicken Shoot. Oh, wow. You're telling me we're calling Chicken Shoot a better game? Yeah, I guess. What horrible nightmare world have we stumbled into where a cross comparison to a former Just Bad Game entry is a showcase of quality? Heck, the game even looks better than Canada Hunt. Stuff is actually happening around the levels. Lots of at least partially interesting things to look at. But here you have three levels of poorly textured empty form Forest, none of which feel all that different. And the animals behave almost identical as well. Not much difference between deer, elk, and turkeys in this game. Just one's a lot smaller. That's it, no other creatures. Beyond the trees and plants, not much else is going on in these levels. Every stage has a thick plume of fog that cuts off your viewing distance. Sometimes it actually grows as you walk closer to it. See that tree in the distance? Consumed. In my restless dreams, I see that town. This seems perfect for long distance aiming while hunting, doesn't it? In fact, each stage is bordered by an invisible wall, some of it marked by these stupid warning posts. The signs surrounding the hunting grounds are a stern reminder that this world is limited. These markers do not represent real boundaries on physical land. They are falsehoods an artificial means preventing traversal to an unkempt world beyond. Atop the cliffs, if one were to venture, they would bear witness to landscapes begging to be touched. But 
Much like these printed papers, they are a lie. There exists nothing of value there. No wildlife, no foliage, nothing but a meaningless void. As pointless as a legal warning forbidding hunting, unsigned by any caring government agent, or perhaps even God itself. That sounds so sad. It is sad. Canada Hunt feels unfinished, yet here it is as a final product released on at least two different platforms. Then again, I don't have much experience with the hunting genre. Uh, maybe all hunting games are like this? <laughs> Well, I'm glad that you brought that up, because no, they are totally not all like this. Wait, did you stop to play an entire group of hunting titles midway through this episode just to understand what the genre's strengths and weaknesses are? You know, buddy! Commitment. Folks, I went through a lot of titles, but focused on the long-running Cabela series of licensed hunting games that are stacked with tons of features. Features? Like what? Well, they've got a slew of locations you can visit. Each alone are several times larger than all three of Canada Hunt's levels combined. You've got way more weapons, tools, animal types, and by gosh, even vehicles. Vehicles? Yes, vehicles in a hunting game. How novel. I hope you shoot better than you drive. Even hitting targets has more depth. You're given far more control and shown results on how each shot was taken. Okay, yeah, fine. These games are clearly better, but they're newer than Canada Hunt, right? No! Everything you just saw was released prior to Canada Hunt's arrival on Wii. It's practically offensive comparing Canada Hunt to these other games at all! Yeah, playing those other titles really puts things into perspective. Like this! Do you see that strange yellow splat every time we shoot an animal? Kinda looks like a pee-pee spritz where your bullet lands. Well, that strange yellow blotch? That's likely inspired by other games where they show the animal's internal workings with bright neon colors to guide you into lining up your shot before you fire. But in Canada Hunt, you only see it after you fired. <laughs> So maybe it's a way to highlight where your bullet lands, but why would it cover so much area? A bullet isn't that large. Whatever this thing is, Canada Hunt just implemented it in a way that doesn't look good and never explained to the player why it's happening. So we're assuming it's there to mark your hit location? The game never tells you where your hit landed after the fact, so I suppose it doesn't really matter. The weapon variety specifically in other games is used for different hunting scenarios, because no two prey are the same to hunt. They're meant to offer variations and how you take out different animal types. This is a rifle. It should have one impact point for a single bullet. And it does. But this is a shotgun. It should have a spread shot. But when you see its impact from a distance, you can clearly see it's unrealistically tightly grouped together. Why offer different weapons if they all act the same? I don't know, but clearly Canada Hunt's game ideas are inspired by systems in other better games, just implemented much worse. They make the act of playing far more difficult and confusing than any of its contemporaries. If knowingly committing oneself to a hunt can be considered a valiant act, taking on nature and the unknown, can the same not be said for the spirited willingness to dive into poorly crafted software? There is harmony within this thought, the commitment to achieve a primitive goal, to walk into darkness and slay the veiled beast, to arrive aching, yet unbroken ripe to share the spoils. That was a lot of words. Only thing we need a lot of right now is ammunition, because when you use it all up in this game, that's it. You're left to walk the wide, lonesome Canada hunt for eternity. I mean, at the very least, give us a game over prompt and tell us our score once we run out of ammo and can literally no longer hunt. 10 shots. That's all you get, no matter the weapon. Oh, oh, you're out of shells? Time to forcefully quit out of there. Most levels only have six or so animals in total running around, maybe less. And hey, we know what you're thinking. 10 whole shots? Well, I'm a real deal Annie Oakley type. I can make six targets in my sleep. Yeah, maybe in another game, but not here. Because if this hunting frolic isn't clunky enough to move and shoot through, there are glitches, bugs, and outright mistakes that make achieving any kind of goal unimaginable. Like this. This. Deer models pop in and out of existence. 
Sometimes they flicker wildly, making them look like a jokey electric sign outside a fast food joint. But when they stop flickering and totally disappear, not good. That mistake alone makes this hunting game a failure. You cannot hunt what you cannot see. But let's say your deer doesn't don the cloak of invisibility and you manage to tag your prey. Great job. Oh, but not every shot is an instant knockout. Sometimes they'll run away if a shot isn't perfect. While fleeing, injured creatures make blood splatters. Blood splatters that can hover about a foot off the ground. And before you say, Look, there's the trail you were complaining about missing earlier. Follow the blood. Okay, well, first off, you still need to find the animal. And you're not given much help to track those critters down. And second, those blood trails, they exist until, uh, they mysteriously don't. The game only supports so many blood drips until they start to vanish. Yes, you should be able to follow a blood trail for a very long time, but not gonna happen here. The most aggravating part of this? While well, the blood splatters disappear on their own in no time at all, your hunter's footprints seem to stick around way longer. Which would be good if you were tracking yourself. Your footprints can even stick around mid-air. If you get too close to an animal, your hunter will clip through them and sort of fly up a bit, leaving these gravity-defying prints. You can also see them when the broken physics of the game allow you to speed jump off lookout posts in challenge mode. Let's get back to the wildlife around these parts. There are actually other birds in this game besides turkeys, believe it or not. We think, maybe? <laughs> Yup, wait long enough in some levels and they thought the sole soundscape required was phantom geese sounds. Phantom geese sounds that play over and over again. I can hear them in my sleep. Speaking of nightmares, we already went over Canada Hunt's terrible aiming controls. Something made even worse when the game's frame rate collapses like this. But if your brain can somehow compensate for the nonsense attempting to crowbar your hunting skills and you manage to get off a good, clean shot, sometimes even that won't land. Look at that! Look at that! You gotta be kidding me with this! There is no way these bullets are not connecting! Oh, hoser, you can't kill ghost deer, eh? These deer ain't ghosts! I ought to know! That is just bad hit detection! Oh, simmer down there, bud. No need to start a kerfuffle. You two better not become a running gag! Remember that 10 bullet limit? Anyone that thought they were skilled enough to make it work? Skills don't matter when bullets don't bullet. I'm sorry, prey needs to have proper hit detection. It's the one thing. The one thing a hunting game needs to do right. But you may recall we don't just shoot at deer and elk in this experience. Turkeys are strutting around these parts as well. When you hunt for wild bird, the gameplay is modified ever so slightly. Now, when you take aim, your character sits on the ground to get level with the target. You have no control over this. It happens automatically when you aim. It seems odd. Here we see the turkey in its natural habitat, marching, gobbling, Switching character models in an instant. That's a puffy bird. And I guess this is some kind of rotational mating dance? The realism, it's staggering. Look, we're not gonna honey glaze this. The turkey in Canada hunt? They're bulletproof. Unload every shot you got. Won't make a difference. Believe it or not, turkeys react worse than deer or elk when they are shot at. Which is to say, they don't react. We were beginning to think that taking out a turkey was impossible. In this world, bullets don't pierce poultry. That is, until we got frustrated and fired away from the bird. Would have been the answer to our prayers if it wasn't for the warning that popped up. We shot illegal game, and now we're booted back to the stage select? Nobody said there was a legal game. We shot a turkey. You told us to shoot turkeys. This terrible game seemed to be making up rules on the fly and we were sick of it. We went looking for answers. But uh, watch where you walk because in some maps, you'll get permanently glued into parts of the world. What isn't broken? Seriously, I wanna know. Look at this, a deer spawns near us, it runs, we shoot. 
Don't know if the sound of the shot scrambled its brains or just wanted a quick way out of Canada hunt, but for some reason, it starts running right back towards us. Wants to be put out of his misery, I guess. Well, good luck, because in Canada hunt, sometimes the dead don't stay dead. Ah! Hey, commentating guy, can you explain any of this madness? I can't. I just can't. There is nothing here of value, nor anything worth remarking upon. The game's disc's physical presence serves more function as a preventative method repelling moisture off the spruce table rendered from the same Saskatchewan pine the game fails to emulate. Canada Hunt is the refuse of shockingly inept or uncaring creatives unwilling to build a thing worthy of play. A game unfinished, unfit for consumption. We should be humbled, for we are capable of extinguishing our visit by turning off a box set aside a television. There is a solace in this thought, but there will never be comfort in this knowledge that this world remains accessible to future unwitting souls. This will forever fill you as it does I with endless trepidation. Wow, uh, anything to add to that? Nah, I think that covers it. It's just bad. Hold, hold on, Shane. Before we end the episode, if the United States calls them Smarties and Canada calls them Rockets, what does the UK call them? They call them Fizzers. It worries me that you have this stuff trapped up in your brain. Yeah, that's exactly what my psychiatrist said. <laughs>